Hello everyone. Today I wanted to talk about all the movies that I watched in 2021 and this is going to be movies part one where I talk about all of the movies that are 2021 releases because there's just I watched way too many this year to cover in one video. Um, so I did I've already done videos on books that I read in 2021 and TV shows that I watched so go check those out. As I just said, I'll be doing another one for movies part two and also for albums. So, so stay tuned for those if you're interested in that. Again, just to go over the rules really quick, it's pretty clear cut. A, B, C, D, F, green is good for A. Best ones will go on the top, worst ones on the bottom. So let's get into it. So first up is Malcolm and Marie. This stars Zendaya. Love her. This one was pretty much just following this couple after an event, and it's just following their relationship on this one night. And because it's one night, like, it's definitely interesting, but I think it got a little bit old and boring, definitely boring. But there were some good things about it. There was good music. It had some really gorgeous shots. And I think what stood out the most about this movie was their performances. They were both just, they had to go through such crazy emotions on both ends of the spectrum. And so th their performances were definitely a standout about this movie. But I think plot wise, I personally just need something to hold my attention a little bit better. So for that reason, I'm going to put it in C. Next up is Operation Varsity Blues, the college admissions scandal. So this was about the, a recent crime or scandal, as, as it says, where basically rich celebrities were paying to get their kids into colleges. So it's a documentary on Netflix. It was pretty standard, I think. I don't know if I learned too much new information. I've been kind of following it on YouTube and just on the news since it broke. So if you don't know much about it, I think it would be interesting. I think it did bring up some interesting points that I hadn't really thought about, about why it's wrong and how it affects, it has almost a, a domino effect of how it affects all of these different parts of the college system and and applicants' lives. So I think I'll, I'll I think I'll put it in B tier. Next is In the Heights. This is a musical written by Lynn Manuel Miranda before he did Hamilton and it's about New York, this New York Latino community and more specifically, the main character who has this dream about moving away. And that that's pretty much what I would say. It's just about this community and all of the main different main characters and how they interact in their community and their family and the culture and just embracing the culture. And this one got really good reviews, but it wasn't... I'm a huge musicals fan, but it wasn't my favorite. I think I'm going to put that one in B. It just wasn't... And I can't exactly put into words what it was about it that I didn't like. I think it was cast really well. It was cast with Broadway people, which I always love. The, I liked the music. I think part of it might have been the plot was a little bit lacking for me personally. So Willy's Wonderland is next. Oh God, this one was terrible. I'm already, I know I'm going to put that in F already. Um, so that one is about, it's basically like a Five Nights at Freddy's type of ripoff. And it has Nicolas Cage in it. And he's basically this guy that has to work at the arcade or whatever you want to call it and the Chuck E. Cheese type place and clean up and he defeats all the monsters and or animatronics and it was just it was so cheesy and like tacky and 
I don't know. I just, I did not like it at all. Next is Bo Burnham's Inside. So everyone, I mean, you probably already know what that is. Everyone talked about this. It was a Netflix special that was Bo Burnham singing about COVID, basically, and quarantine and existential crises that correspond to the pandemic. And so I guess I'm I'm a musical person, so that kind of should entice me because there was a lot of songs. Uh, It was okay, though. It hasn't been too memorable for me other than, like, the memes that I've seen. Mm. I'm going to put that in C. No, I should probably put it in B. I I think it was okay. I think it did get a little bit annoying for me, just, like, how overplayed it was and how much everybody was talking about it and how many TikToks I saw about this, but I do think it was clever for the most part and songs were catchy. So I'll put it in B. Next is Black Widow. This was, I kind of try to see most of the Marvel movies these days. I'm trying to keep up with them all. Uh, But I don't think this one was the best. I think it was okay. I like, as I heard someone say once that it's just It's like five years too late for a Black Widow movie. It just seems so irrelevant to where we are in the MCU right now. And I liked Florence Pugh in it. That's about all I'd say. I think it was pretty forgettable. I don't really remember anything else. I'll put it in C. It was pretty average for a a Marvel movie, I think, to me. And I think one thing that stands out for me about Marvel movies is I usually like the comedy. I like how funny and quirky and how they get their little quips in as they're, you know, fighting the bad guy. But I don't think, I don't think that was really a thing in this one. So that's just, you know, something that I wasn't a fan of in this one. Next is Jungle Cruise. This one is based on the Disneyland ride. And it stars The Rock and Emily Blunt. And it's basically just their, about their jungle journey. I think this one was cute. <laughs> that's, that's what I'd say about it. I don't think it was too memorable. It's just like a cute Disney adventure movie that has almost like Jumanji vibes maybe. It was funny, but also it's like the same jokes that... I feel like we've all seen a million times. So I'm going to put that one in C, I think. Next is a classic horror story. So this is, I think it's an Italian movie that came out on Netflix. And it's a horror movie, obviously, about... And I can't really go too much into detail on this one because of spoilers. But it's basically about these people that carpool together and then they wind up in the woods and don't know how they got there and how to get out kind of thing. And I did a a full video on this just explaining the movie and my interpretation of it and questions. I definitely had a lot of questions and plot holes that I was trying to work through so that, that was kind of frustrating, that bit. There were a decent amount of plot holes, but I do think, and I don't think it reached its full potential either. I think it could have played into these themes a lot more, but I do think, at least plot-wise, it was very interesting and original. I can't really think of anything else like it, and I do think it has been one of the most memorable horror movies that I've watched this year. And I do think it had a pretty decent amount of scares that have stuck with me. So I'm going to leave, I'm going to put that in B. Next is The Kissing Booth 3. Um, I think this one is an F. (laughs) I, I actually, okay, well, before I get into it, I'll explain the plot a little bit more. So it's, the third one, but so it's basically just like a cute little, it's a Netflix movie. It's just a cute little 
rom-com chick flick kind of thing and it's kind of late high school and the first one just revolves around I don't know I guess the, this girl and her this girl and her friend and her friend's brother and their their love life and relationships I guess that's all I'd say it's just a generic like high school romance maybe and I actually really liked the first one Joey King and Jacob Elordi are in this and I, I just really liked the first one. I thought it was cute plot-wise and just ro romance-wise. I thought it was cute. And I like how they subverted some tropes. I think along the way, like Kissing Booth 2 was just uh, unnecessary. Like there wasn't really anything important there. And then Kissing Booth 3, I feel like it went really off track with just not really plot maybe like not knowing where it wanted to go it kind of just had weird montages like it was there wasn't much story there there was just a lot of wasted time of just you know a, a three minute montage of them cleaning a room and you know playing with the things they find and trying on clothes and it and it also just has kind of the oversaturation of like, it felt like they were trying to make it a movie for five-year-olds with just almost, like, vaudevillian jokes and, you know, like, oops, they fell and just over-the-top kind of stuff like that. And also just with the colors and the texting, which is also a problem for He's All That, which is next. It's just kind of this Netflix teen style that is not I feel like they don't give teens enough credit to be interested in something that's a little more subtle so yeah that's what I, I will say about Kissing Booth 3. Next is He's All That which is a remake of She's All That and it's basically about this girl that takes a bet to make over this like nerdy boy. I mean, I just don't... I, I also did a little review on this one, too, and a lot of people watched this. It was a heavy point of conversation, or just a really popular... A lot of people talked about it. But I... And a lot of people criticized it because Addison Ray is a TikToker, so a lot of people are, you know, wanting to hate it because of that. But I I, I just thought it was completely average. I think it's on, I'm going to put it on D, I think, just because, not that I thought it was terribly bad, but just, I feel like it just completely passed through me. Like, I don't really remember watching this, basically. And it's kind of the same thing with Kissing Booth 3. It's just like, it's so, like, it just feels like there's no content or no heart behind it. Like, it's obviously just kind of a ploy to get teenager money and I don't know there's like no effort put in into it to me and he's all that there was literally I just there was not real it was all just very average completely average I didn't care about the romance the acting was fine I guess for you know there wasn't much range to what they were doing but yeah so that's what I'll say about that one Next is Candyman. This is the one that came out this year, obviously. It's kind of a reboot of the older version. It's a horror movie. And I honestly, I don't think I can really explain much of what it's about without spoiling it. But it was something that kept me thinking about it for a while after I watched it. And that made me want to do some analysis of it. And I do think also that there were some pretty good scares in there. Some that stuck with me and some that really affected me. There's some really cool effects in there also visually. So I think, so I think I will put that one in A. I definitely had some problems with it. I think mostly, mostly looking from the old version to this one and seeing how they connected some of it and 
almost almost plot hole type of things, but I think as a standalone, I think it is, and I think it gets a little bit too convoluted at times. It's really interesting plot wise and the villain and the lore and the scares are good and the visuals are interesting. Next, I want to talk about To All the Boys, Always and Forever. This is the third movie in the To All the Boys I Loved Before franchise, and it was okay. I think I liked it better than the second one, and I think I liked the first one okay. There's a lot of parallels between this one and The Kissing Booth. It's a little bit more muted, I'd say, or subtle than The Kissing Booth is, but it's still, I think, it's still a little bit too much for me, I think. And I think at this point, I just, like, didn't care about the relationships at all. This is, by the way, this is just another teen romance, high school romance. There isn't really anything else I would say about it. This one was also, I think, just completely average and forgettable, so I'm going to put that one in D. Next is Cinderella. This is another remake of Cinderella that is on Amazon. And it has an all-star cast of people that I love. It has Camilla Cabello, Billy Porter, Adina Menzel. James Corden is in that, which a lot of people don't like, but I do like. And it's a musical. It's for kids, so it's, it's very targeted. A lot of people try to make fun of it because they don't like it when it's yeah, I think it reached its main, its intended audience. The reason why I didn't love it as much was because it's a jukebox musical, which I hate. Like, I just don't need to see them do worse versions of songs that I like. Like, they do covers of Queen, and it's like, you really can't compare to Queen, and you're almost doing a disservice by attempting to do a cover of Queen. So it's it's just, I don't need to see, it's basically like watching Glee. It's like, I don't need to watch this. I'm not interested. <laughs> so that that's my main complaint. I think Camilla did a good job. I think Billy Porter was especially a, a standout. I loved him. Adina was also good. But I think this one is pretty average for me, so I'm going to put that in C. Next is The Voyeurs, which is an Amazon movie, and it's about this couple that just moves in, and then they become intrigued and interested, too interested, in the couple across the way. And it's kind of a mystery thriller it's dark, it's very symbolic and I think over the top and cheesy a little bit with kind of the messages that it's trying to get across. It's a little bit pretentious without being like crafty enough to actually be pretentious. But I, th I thought it was interesting and I did do an analysis video on this just because I thought even though some of the themes are kind of obvious, I just thought it was interesting to kind of break it all down. And it has Sydney Sweeney in it, which I love. Another thing I liked about this one was visually, I just thought it looked really nice and there's really cool music integrated into it also. And it definitely was memorable. Like I do think it was a little bit cheesy. I do think it was almost lifetime-y, but in an artsy way, so. <laughs> That kind of makes it okay to me. And it was kind of, it was pretty memorable. Like I think I want to put it in A. Yeah, I think I'm gonna put it in A. It was just like it kind of stuck with me for a while. It was just so interesting. And obviously it's like over the top. Like if you know the ending and what happens, like obviously that would never actually happen, but like it's just so good. Like the story. And it's a, a mystery thriller, so it keeps me inch I just really love mysteries and thrillers because they keep me entertained and invested and it keeps me guessing of what all of the clues are going to be and how it's going to end so I really like that aspect of it as well 
Next is Everybody's Talking About Jamie. This is another musical that came out on Amazon, and it's set in England, and it's about this teenager who he wants to become a drag queen. That's basically what it's about. Uh, I think I'm going to put that one in A. I think it has a lot of things I like about it. It has, like, the English vibes, which I really like. Like, it reminded me of Angus Long's Imperfect Snogging, which I was, like, obsessed with. It also gives me Matilda the Musical vibes. It has a really good message. The songs were pretty good. And it's just kind of really wholesome, I think. I loved the relationship between Jamie and his mom. So there was a, a couple, there was a lot of good things about it. And I can't really remember anything bad about it. Just, I guess my only thing would be that it hasn't been too, too memorable. But I also, I, I haven't completely forgotten that I watched it. Like I go back and watch song clips occasionally. Next, I want to talk about Dear Evan Hansen. This is another musical that came out this year, came out in theaters. It's based off of a stage musical. It has Ben Platt in it, who I love, and it's basically just about this teenager who, without trying to ruin it too much, it's basically just about this teenager who kind of gets caught up in a lie that he was friends with someone that he wasn't. And so this one, I am a huge fan of the stage version. I love it. I also did a full review on this movie. If you're interested, you can go check that out. But so obviously I'm a fan of the, the stage musical. So I already really love the songs. They did add some new songs and I thought they fit in really well. I think the casting is really good. A lot of people really hated that Ben was cast in this role, and I think he was fine. I mean, obviously he's obviously he's really good at performing the role, but people mostly just made fun of him looking too old, which is something that I can easily look past. I think it happens a lot where old people, old looking people are cast in young roles. But anyways, moving on from that, the rest of the cast was really good, I thought. It's a really important story and message. Yeah, so all of that said, I did think that there was some, a lot of missed opportunities with the movie. And it's the movie still did, it did really emotionally affect me. Like I cried so many times, but, but I do think there was a lot of missed opportunity with, it was kind of like, I know they were trying to go for a more realistic feel, but I think that also made it it just felt too grounded like they that we weren't really exploring the full potential of the material so i'm gonna put that one in b next is malignant and this one is a horror movie that came out this year obviously and i don't even know how i would describe this movie without spoiling anything um, it's, I think how I've heard it described is it's just about this woman who has visions that come true and over time you just learn more about what's going on. That's what I'll say. And I don't know, this movie was really interesting. <laughs> and I have to say, I did really hate it once I watched it. I did not like it at all, but then once, after I watched it and started watching some reviews on it, I guess people were saying that it's kind of, my problems that I had with it was that it was too cheesy and over the top and just ridiculous, and once I got done with the, watching the movie, I watched some reviews and apparently that was kind of on purpose. So that kind of changes things. I still don't know if I fully believe that, that it was <laughs> supposed to be on purpose. But, you know, so if it's on purpose, that makes it feel more crafty. But my interpretation of it, just watching it, was that it was not 
on purpose of how ridiculous it was being. So I'm very torn on that. So I'm going to put that in C. It's the very opposite of average. It's the very opposite of forgettable, but it's probably one of the most memorable movies of the year for me, but I'm just so torn between whether it's good or bad. I I definitely do think if I watched it again, I would really enjoy it though. So I'm kind of leaning towards it's good now, I think, but I'm, I don't know. I'm just so torn. I'm just going to leave it and see. Next is Britney versus Spears. This is a Netflix documentary about Britney Spears's conservatorship. And I have to say I liked this one better than the New York Times one that came out. It might have been last year that kind of started up a lot of these conversations. I think this one had a more solid, it was more focused on talking about the conservatorship and what led up to it and kind of breaking down why it isn't appropriate. So I liked that background better than in the other one. That's that's pretty much all I have to say about that one. I think it's still pretty C tier for me. Next is There's Someone Inside Your House. This is a Netflix horror movie. It's like, I guess, a teen horror that... I don't even know how I would describe this one. It's just there are killings around the town and they don't know who it is. That's that's what I'll say. And I guess another important thing to add to that is that they're kind of exposing their secrets as they off them. So this one was, I'm going to put this one in D tier, I think. It was just completely forgettable. And I I think I was pretty bored while I was watching it. And it wasn't really scary. It was, it's probably a PG-13 horror. So, and it's just a slasher. So it wasn't really anything that was too impactful or meaningful to me. There wasn't really like any crazy twists that I didn't see coming. So I'm going to put that in D tier. Next is Dune. This was, you know, one of the most hyped movies of the year. Dune is, it's just a, it's based on a book and it's sci-fi. And I don't even know how to get into explaining this one just because just because it's sci-fi, so it just gets really complicated. But this one has an all-star cast also. Timothy Chalamet, who I love, Zendaya, Oscar Isaac, Jason Momoa. And there's a lot of things that I like about it. I think the world is really cool. The story is really cool. I like the visuals were just stunning and the costumes and just the concepts were all really cool. I do think that they could have done a lot of work with, as someone who hasn't read the book, I think there was a lot of unnecessary stuff that was in here. A lot of stuff that didn't need to be here. Of course, when you've read the book, there's, you get really sensitive and you want everything to be in there. But as someone who hasn't read the book, there was a lot of stuff that seemed unnecessary So I think there was a lot of editing that should have been done. So for that reason, I'm going to put it in B. Next is Bob Ross, Happy Accidents, Betrayal, and Greed. This is a documentary about Bob Ross's life and I guess after his life with his intellectual property. And this is on Netflix. I really love these documentaries about pop culture figures like Bob Ross or like Mr. Rogers, where, you know, these people were just really inspirations and really lights in the darkness, very optimistic and uh, just that I can learn a lot from them. And so this one was really interesting just to learn about more about his background and how he came to be as popular as he was. And then also 
some of the wrongs that have happened to him and his family and his kind of legacy, I guess, how his legacy is being taken advantage of, I think was all really interesting to learn about. So I'm going to put that one in B. Next is Encanto. This is a Disney movie. It's also a musical. The music is also written by Lin-Manuel Miranda. I think this is set in Colombia, and it is about this family that has kind of a magical house that grants them these powers, and this one was good. I think I think this, the songs were good. They didn't particularly stand out for me just on the first listen. I think the representation is really good and important, obviously. I think it was also really stunning to look at. And I think the story was really interesting, too. Another thing that I think was really interesting about the movie was just how many characters there they were and learning about all of the different family members and their relationships. And I also just really liked the magic system. Like, I thought it was really interesting about the house and how they get their powers and the, just the different kinds of powers everyone has. I do think there was also some questions I had, though, about maybe like themes and maybe also plot holes that were a little bit fuzzy or confusing to me. So that's my he main hesitation. I think there were also some funny bits, too, which I did like. But I'm going to put that in B tier. Next is the map of tiny perfect things. This was just a cute little romance rom-com. It's just a romance, I, I think, that came out on Amazon. And it's about these two teens that are stuck in a time loop, basically. And it's what I, what I call pretentious teen movies, where it's just very, you know, like The Fault in Our Stars and that kind of thing, where it's like pretentious and teens and existential and feels really important it's it's that kind of genre and this movie was just I hated it it's an f for me I think I didn't really care about the romance I didn't really care about the story it was like super boring that's pretty much all I have to say about that one it was just uh-uh Next is Pig. This is about this man who has his truffle pig stolen. He lives in the middle of the woods and he has his pig stolen. <laughs> That's basically it. Um, and it stars Nicolas Cage. And I will put this one in mm, maybe C for now, I think. I think the concept was interesting. I think there was, it wasn't exactly what we were expecting from it. But that's okay. It, it was still okay. I think there were some really beautiful shots. But I think the story was a little bit lacking for me. So I'm just going to put that in C for now. Next is Till Death. This stars Megan Fox. And it's just about this woman who has a, a rocky relationship with her husband. And he dies while he is still handcuffed to her and she has to escape basically while you know being handcuffed to him and so it's I guess a thriller maybe and an action movie and kind of a mystery also I think it was it was definitely interesting I was having fun, like, following along and trying to figure out what's going to happen and just trying to figure out how she's going to get out of it. So I don't think it's, like, the most inventive plot, but it was interesting, I think. So I'll put that one in B. Next is Being the Ricardos. This is a biopic about I Love Lucy and Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz and 
just right there, I think, highlights one of the problems that I had with the movie is I don't know if it's about I Love Lucy or if it's about them as people. I think there was an identity crisis. Like, it didn't know if it was about them as people, as actors, or if it was about the show. So I think it was just all over the place. There were so many issues that were explored that it didn't seem like there was one big problem and one big fix at the end. And I also have big problems with the casting. I don't think it makes sense at all. I don't think for the most... Well, it's 50-50... I, in some moments, I, I thought that they were doing a decent impression, some moments not, and I think both of them just don't really look like the real life people. Uh, one thing I did like about it was I just liked learning about kind of how influential the show was, I guess, in breaking, breaking barriers, and I also liked some of the side information about about Vivian Vance. I thought that was really interesting and something that I didn't know anything about. So there were some things I liked about it, but overall I didn't really like it. So I'm going to put that in D. And next is Tick, Tick, Boom. This is another musical. This one's directed by Lin-Manuel Miranda. It stars Andrew, Andrew Garfield. It's kind of an... A, biographical story about Jonathan Larson who wrote Rent. This one really, I think, registered or resonated with me. The themes and kind of the struggle that they focus on in this movie. I think it was a really good time for me. This came into my life at a really accurate Point, I guess that I'm where I am in my life so I loved that the songs are pretty good for the most part there's some really cool performances and things that they did Andrew Garfield was great and it definitely makes me really interested to just learn more about Jonathan Larson and learn delve deeper into his works and delve deeper into Rent so I'm going to put that one into A tier. Next is just, this is just symbolic of all of the Hallmark movies that I watched this year. I watched 40 of them, all 40 new ones. And they're all just, I don't know what to tell you. They're just all generic one and a half hour Christmas movies. And I'm going to put that in D tier, or in F tier, actually. I think... I think last year I might have put it in C tier. And I think last year's Batch of Movies was a lot better than this year's. This year's there wasn't really any standouts. There was there was one standout and then maybe three that were that were okay, but still none of them compared to like any normal Christmas movie that I would watch. And what you know, only having 5 out of 40 that were actually worth my time is not a good ratio. I think that they could do a lot more. They just stick to the same formula over and over again when I think that they don't need to put that much effort in to actually make something usable. And I I don't know if I'm going to do it again next year, watching all the movies, because uh, the, the ratio is just not there. Next is I Care A Lot. This is a Netflix original. Uh, It's basically about these... It's almost like along the lines of Britney Spears' conservatorship. It's about like old people kind of being taken advantage of by people that are designated to be like conservators of their estates and belongings. And, And so specifically it's about these con artists that and a battle between someone that they shouldn't mess with basically and I think the concept was really interesting I think the execution wasn't quite there for me I think that one's a C for me it had a good cast it wasn't it wasn't too memorable for me next is the United States versus Billie Holiday this one was really bad 
it, I guess this one also counts as a musical. It's kind of a biography about Billie Holiday. I think this one also, it's a biopic, but it's also kind of, I think this one also didn't know exactly what it wanted to be, if it wanted to be about Billie Holiday, if it wanted to be about this one specific case or aspect of her life. I think Andre Day's performance was really great. I don't really, I can't speak to whether she accurately portrayed Billie Holiday, but just, I just know that she's a singer and not an experienced actor. So from that perspective, I think she was really great. I don't know. I think the movie was just, it, the movie was extremely, extremely boring for, it. like it wasn't super long, but it was still really hard to get through just from how boring it was and unfocused and messy. And I don't think it portrayed her in the best light either. I don't really like how they kind of introduce her as like just a drug addict and that's kind of all she has to offer is how they kind of present it. That's how I saw it anyways. So I wasn't really a huge fan of that. Next is The World's a Little Blurry. This is a Apple TV documentary about Billie Eilish. I'm going to put that in B tier. I think I just love Billy, so you know any behind the scenes footage I can get and just performances that I can see, I love that and I love just getting insight into her creative process and yeah, that's that's pretty much it. And I think even if you aren't a Billy fan, I think you would still I think it would still be interesting to watch this because I think a lot of people don't understand kind of the genius that she has. So I think this kind of gives would give people a good insight into how creative she is and how hard she works. Next is Nomadland. This is base it's kind of a it's a kind of documentary about but not really. It's mostly fictional about just this lifestyle of traveling in a van and working for some months working for some months but also spending a lot of your time on the road and finding little odd jobs along the way and I think there were also some really beautiful shots in this one also I think it was interesting to kind of learn about this lifestyle but I think plot wise it was a little average for me so I'm gonna put that I'm, I'll put it in B because I don't think it was forgettable really um but I don't also don't think it was as good as a lot of other people think uh next is the last blockbuster this was a documentary that came out on I'm not sure if it's a Netflix original, but it's a documentary about the last Blockbuster and just kind of the rise of Blockbuster and these video rental stores in general and the fall of them and how there's only one left and the culture around these kinds of stores. And I think as someone who went to those kinds of stores, it's really interesting if you're some if you're not someone that cared about that or if you're just a younger person that never got to experience that i don't think this would be interesting at all i think it's hard to capture that that nostalgia so i think it it's fun to watch as someone who really really loved going to those kinds of stores it's really interesting to watch it's really nostalgic if you're someone who never cared i don't think you would be interested and I also think that this movie kind of lost focus a little bit too and didn't know exactly what aspects it wanted to focus on or it just didn't have enough content. There was just, sometimes there was just random stuff that I'm like, I don't know why you're talking about this. And just one other thing I guess that I liked about this movie was that it brought my attention to the last blockbuster and I, that's definitely something that I would want to go visit just to kind of get that nostalgic experience again and just to kind of support it because I really miss Blockbuster and Hollywood Video and all of those. 
But as a documentary, I think it's a D for me. And lastly, I have The Dig, which is starring Carrie Mulligan and Ray Fiennes, and it's set in England, in, and it's basically just about an archaeological dig. I don't know, them trying to find something in this woman's backyard. And I think aesthetically it was really cool. I liked the costumes and the house and that kind of thing. I think some of the performances were really good and just the characters and relationships. I think story-wise it was maybe a tad boring. So I think I'm going to put that in C. And I think it was just a little bit forgettable for me. So, so that's it for my tier list. I, I'm very shocked at this. I, I like to see a bell curve and B is winning out, which is surprising. I guess that's good though. I, I would rather see more movies that I actually like. I also have a, a good amount of D's and F's. I wasn't exactly expecting that. A lot of average movies and not very many A-tier movies, which is disappointing, but that's okay. So overall in 2021, I watched 34 new movies. Yeah, I just, I like seeing all of this and ranking all of them. And so I just like reminiscing on the year and just reminding myself about all of the different things I watched and experiences that I had. So that's it for part one of ranking movies. The next video will be ranking older movies, 2020 or earlier, and I'll also do one on albums. So that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!